I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. presents a Halloween special. I need a really scary mask, like that one. Based on the bestsellers of R.L. Stein. I can't get it off me. Goosebumps, the haunted mask. His face, it's your face now. Friday at 8, 7 central on Fox. Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another review. And this is a review, a Patreon review for Stephen Wilkos. And it's for two episodes of a TV show called Goosebumps. First off, thank you for joining me on the Patreon, man. Once again, Stephen Wilkos, I really appreciate it. Thank you to everyone who has done that. Uh, if you're ever interested in sending me requests, you can either do so via my Patreon, which the link is down below in the info box, and there's certain tiers for certain things, or you can always do it directly via my PayPal. Feel free to do that as well. And... It could be review or pretty much any type of video, honestly. That's up to you, though. But, again, Goosebumps, the TV show. I did not watch this growing up, but I've heard of the books. I remember reading some of the books way, way back in the day. I think when I was in middle school. But to be honest, I don't know if I actually read a lot of them. I remember mostly the covers. I remember the covers being very cool in a lot of these books. I know they made movies, but the trailers, I go, why is this like Jumanji or something? I mean, based on the trailers, you never get a sense of horror. Like I remember you would get a little bit, I mean, still a kid's book. And the other, there was something else I read back in the day and it's on the tip of my tongue. For some reason, I remember there were horror books for kids, but there were like really tiny books too. They were like that tall and, and thin, but then they were like creepy stories and like every chapter. Fuck, nah, that's going to bother me though. I, I can't even give you much detail. It's not Goosebumps, it's not Fear Street or any of that stuff. No, it was like a little book and like a bunch of different little stories in it. And fuck, I can't remember. That's going to bother me now. It just popped in my head. But anyway. But I did not grow up with the, the Goosebumps TV show. But I did find these to watch. They were on Daily Motion. I was thinking, people are like, how do you find stuff to watch? Believe me, if you go to Google and then you type in the name of the movie and you go to the option that says plus 20 minutes in the videos. This is a lot of stuff you can find. Again, like these are on daily motion and actually the other one was on YouTube because there's the haunted mask part one and the haunted mask part two. Now both, I guess the, throughout the show, each episode was hosted by the author Goosebumps R.L. Stein. And I say, he sucks ass as a host. He cannot host for shit. He's about as believable as... I don't... I can't even think of anything. My... Okay, if this was a kid... No, you don't believe that? It's Ali. I don't believe this guy is a host. Stick to writing books, man. <laughs> You're about as wooden and emotionless as this fucking table. So, but after that, 
the first episode, Haunted Mask, was pretty good. I, I actually enjoyed it. It's made for kids. So it's nothing too horrific. It's nothing too crazy. Again, made for kids. But even then, I didn't mind the lead girl. Which she is a character I felt sorry for because she's always being picked on. Jokes are always pulled on her because she's a bit of a steerdy cat. And some crazy jokes they pull on her. Like they put a worm in her sandwich that she eats accidentally. Which, fuck today, you could sue for that shit. And the kids all laughing at her. Because she just steered easily. And she hates that she just steered so easily. And I mean, you really feel bad for the character. At least I did. I thought the little girl did a very competent job. I forget the actress's name. And so she really wants, now that Halloween's coming up, to buy a really steery mask. So she goes to this place. And I recognize the guy who owns the store. He's a guy, he was in Tommy Boy. He was the guy that Chris Farley did his first successful sale with, with the brake pads. But what about the warning in the box? Yeah, yeah they warn you it's a piece of shit. That's not the exact quote, but no guarantee. How come they put a guarantee on the box? Does they know it's a guaranteed piece of shit? But th yeah, that guy who Tommy Boy makes the first successful sale with Tommy Boy. It's the owner of the store. So it was okay. It's cool to see that guy. And she kind of does something that seemed a bit out of character for her where she just she wants this mask. The guy doesn't want to sell it. It's like you hell you get anything else for free but not these but then she just takes it and granted she just throws the money in his face and then takes it I'm like, eh, even that seems a bit out of character for what we've seen so far with this kid but I mean I guess supposed to be desperate measures but still that's still stealing even if, even if you leave the money it's still stealing but okay the guy doesn't do anything she puts on the mask she's steering her brother steering kids she tries to take the mask off once. She can barely do it. And ultimately does. For me, it'd be like, oh, fuck it. If I couldn't do it one time, I ain't putting the shit on again. But she does. And then starts steering people. Her friend is getting uneasier about her too. I like the look of the mask. I think it's a nice design of the mask. I thought the little girl, again, for a kid's show, did a pretty decent job acting-wise, even in the, the mask, trying to be steery. You know, she stares this little girl that pisses off the, the mom when they're trick-or-treating, stares the bullies into apologizing. Uh, she's also tearing this head that's a mannequin. And I'm like, if this was a boy in the future, she would become Al Snow. <laughs> But she, the head represents her because her mom had made it because she's a sculptor or something. I guess it's supposed to represent when she's tearing around because sometimes it kind of talks to her. And so I just burying it. It's kind of like burying that part of herself. That's the symbolism. And all I'm thinking is head, head, head. <laughs> ECW, ECW, but she buries it, and then she gets back with her friend, but then she's like, no, let me take the mask off, and she can't, and it's, the bomb has actually been melded to her skin, which I thought was a pretty interesting idea, and then she even looks in the mirror, and she's like, those aren't my eyes, so I thought it was only like 40-some minutes long, and decently effective, where the whole message is appreciate who you are. Appreciate what you've always had. Don't change for others. Don't give in to peer pressure or bullies. Uh, things work out for the end, for the most part. Although it leaves itself a cliffhanger 
which is resolved apparently off screen because then you have the sequel, The Haunted Mask 2, which I didn't care for as much as the first one. Maybe because the little girl does return. It's like they say it's been a year. I believe it was the same actress. And she's in it, but she's not really the the star of the episode. And they just have a throwaway. Just what happened in the the cliffhanger was she got the mask off, but the, the brother, the little brother, put the mask on. And then here they just explain offhandedly, oh, hey, I, you're lucky you only put that mask on once. So the, the main characters, her and her friend, return. The, le the lead girl did learn her lesson, so I appreciate that. That's not, oh my gosh, you're going to do the same shit again. They didn't do that. I give credit to that. But instead, you, they've concentrated on the bullies for some reason. I'm like, these bullies were jerk-off assholes and the Haunted Mask won. I don't give a shit about these two kids that now all of a sudden are friendly with the two ter main characters of the previous one. But now they're more the focus, which was a mistake. It's Halloween again. The mask rises again, but now it gets the store owner. While this old man mask, the, one of the bullies gets and puts on. And I just, I didn't care for these kids being the leads. Because, again, they were the bullies in the previous one. I didn't give a shit about them. So I don't care what happens to this kid. He could be the kid from fucking Halloween 3, turn the bug boy here. The mask he's wearing, I don't care for as much. It pretty much just turns him into an old man, always asking for water. Water, water. At least it's not a fucking hot doll like Creep Show 3, but it just... It just wasn't as effective. It wasn't as interesting. Because, again, the the, fo the characters they're focused on, the mask itself just isn't as interesting or as creepy looking as the mask in the first one. Which, that mask being worn by the store owner, does it attach to him? And then pretty much that it's that kid wandering around. Sometimes spiders come out of the, the head. He's trying to ask for help. No one wants to do it. Realizes he can't take off the mask. Freaks out the other bully who then gets help from the girl from the last episode. Or the, the, the first haunted mask. Really it just culminates with the store owner, the mask that's on the store owner wants that girl because they near the previous Halloween. But the bully with the, the old man mask gets her out of the way. That was an act of love, which this is how you get the mask off in the previous one and this one. And so they're able to take the mask off again. So everything's fine except the dog is taking one of the masks and buried it. I guess for Haunted Mask 3, which I don't think there was. So again, I thought the first episode actually was decently effective for kids for you know telling its message, you know, accept yourself for who you are, don't change for others. Again, the, the look of the the mask, the whole like bearing her old part with the, the mannequin head version of her. The the lead girl's performance, her being the focus, feeling sorry for her because she's been picked on so much at the beginning. All that culminates in the first haunted mask being effective. I thought the second one, you honestly didn't need it. You honestly didn't need it. I mean, I guess that way, if you don't like the cliffhanger in Haunted Mask 1, don't worry because it's fixed in Haunted Mask 2. So I guess there's that. It's just the mask gets buried, but whatever. By the fucking stupid dog. I mean, 
I can't really say much about the show because I did. I did not grow up with the show. You guys can let me know what are your favorite episodes of the show. Or, you know, what do you like of the show? Or do you remember reading the books? Or if if there's some person that the fucking vague description I gave way, way back in the day, there was a series of books that were like this big and thin, but then they had like a bunch of little stories and I, I can't remember that fucking thing. I can't even tell you where to begin, so don't worry about that, but overall glad I watched it at least the first Haunted Mask again I enjoyed it second one eh, I thought it was much lower quality than the first one but that's just me but thank you once again Stephen Wilkos for the request uh, thank you to everyone out there for watching take care and we will see you in the next video later